this work. One of the main themes of uh, Manfredo Tafuri's work, whether he was working on the Renaissance uh, Enlightenment and the architecture of the 20th century, trying to illustrate the difference uh, between architectural work and uh, reality in, in general. Or if I original beyond the curtains of utopia, beyond the fascination of architectural autonomy, right? beyond the invasions of artificial language in order to deliver a song. such a complex conceptualization of their work, when it has become clear, almost since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, that the city does not need architects. I will translate again in this terminology of the 60s, when it, it has become clear that reality doesn't need architecture made by architects, by official architects, uh, and the architects of the official uh, culture. Next. When it is clear that reality, the capitalist development, runs faster on than any architect's idea, and that runs without any concern about the architect's will to control or dominate the reality, and that architecture is simply the work of projecto trascurabile, or a negligible, useless object. I will not deal with all the problems and questions you can find them better explained in Tafuri's books and essays. I need this introduction to focus and to start the point of uh, any, any critical and historical discourse opened by Tafuri in general in order to analyze this specific topic of this critique of freedom. So I will analyze just one specific text written by Tafuri, Architettura e Realismo, published in this catalogue from uh, 1985, in a catalogue of an exhibition that was held in, at the Triennale of Milano, La Ventura delle Idee, The Adventures of Ideas, an exhibition that was curated by uh, Vittorio Magnago Lampugnani, and had to aim to uh, read back some crucial some crucial topics of modernity, like the realism, functionalism, technicism, organicism, expressionism, uh, etc., etc., and trace the origins of this concept in, uh, back in what is considered to be uh, uh, the, the second great beginning of modernity, so the Enlightenment. Uh, as you will notice, this text is, is a product uh, of uh, long life research that Tafuri. Uh, they were first in Rome and later as uh, the director of the uh, Department uh, of History and Criticism in at the U.S. Like, so the range is from the state in the middle of the 60s till the 90s, 1984. But so before talking about uh, the content of this script, the Polish critic of realism, 
in architecture, it is important to remember some aspects of his intellectual biography in order to contextualize uh, uh, the text within the contemporary architectural debate already well introduced this morning by Silvia Malkovar. Every attitude in general deserves a historical contextualization, especially, especially if we talk about Tafuri, because he was a historian, was a historian that was particularly, if not maybe obsessively, linked to, uh, to his presence. And also his determination in judging the distance between the, 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 the often enormous distance between a reality and an architectural work needs uh, uh, itself, its determination needs itself a specific historical contextualization. Uh, Tafuri attended the, the Faculty of Architecture in Rome, he graduated in 1959, a context that was strongly influenced by the great debate on the reconstruction of the country, uh, of the post-war Italy. <coughs> so the process was of, of reconstruction of Italy was a pivotal moment, a very important moment for, um, uh, we could say, for the final, uh, uh, final modernity of Italian architecture. Uh, the modernity uh, that manifested itself on the wider national level. Until the in the, the, the post-war uh, years, modernity was in some kind of way, like in the 30s, was, was relegated in intellectual circles and in, in, in main, uh, main Italian cities. But the post-war years were the first years of uh, uh, the, the real uh, wide Italian uh, modernization. Uh, but the post-war Italian uh, architectural culture faced many, many structural uh, difficulties organizational, technical, technological problems, the prob problems of creating uh, uh, from the foundation uh, uh, an Italian construction industry, uh, uh, and of course the dramatic social and housing problems uh, that uh, Italy has faced after the At the same time, it is also, uh, Italy also faced a substanti substantial uh, cultural problem, a uh, very, very difficult solution. Besides the rebuilding of the country, uh, Italy, Italian culture had to overcome, by all means available, the legacy of fashion. Uh, so, besides the cultural, intellectual, uh, and professional legacy that remained from the fashion, what had to be changed radically was the architectural language. And the relationship between architecture and city, and the nature of teaching architecture, and, of course, the role of criticism and the role of history within the discipline of architecture. The main problem was that there, there was a lack of models, of references, uh, especially international references, start, starting point from which try, try to uh, uh, draw some duration for the record. Speaking examples, of course, the ones that characterized the uh, 20s and the 30s in Italy were had to be erased uh, uh, from the post-war mentality. On one hand, of course, the academic section of uh, On one hand, the academic architecture inspired, inspired by neoclassic tendencies that characterized fascism was something, of course, unthinkable, uh, uh, both in linguistic, but especially in spatial terms. On the other side, the legacy of what we call functionalism. In the context of the immediate post-war years, functionalism was simply not uh, usable. And uh, in terms on, of architectural language, it was, it was unthinkable to organize the reconstruction uh, around the premises of the pure abstraction. And in terms of urban planning, it was clear that the functionalist model proposed in the 20s and the 30s were definitely uh, 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 in this sense, Italy absolutely followed the To simplify, Italian architects um, proposed one great cultural direction uh, for the Italian reconstruction, or rather one model around which Italian architecture could be 
rebuild from its foundation. The so-called neorealism, or neorealism, we talked already about this today. The recovering of popular uh, tradition in the aspiration for a new language that in fact removed from both the abstraction of the late modernist architecture and the, at the same time the monumentalism that correct, characterized the excessive form of fascist Sorry, I'm... Neorealism, as you already know, uh, was a magic moment for, uh, for the Italian, uh, Italian culture. Art, literature, sociology, philosophy, urban geography, and architecture. They all, all these disciplines shared the idea of turning the attention to the simple man, to the simple thing, to the new account of reality. Almost the entire Italian intelligentsia participated in a collective, multidisciplinary effort to the reconstruction of all the country, based on this myth, really a myth, a built myth of the spontaneous traditional culture. So the formative years of Manfredi, Manfredo Tafuri are characterized by the Italian modernization through neorealism, like all the architects of his generation, he is called in the beginning of the 60s to confront himself with the problems of reconstruction, questioning its success, success moment, its outcome in general. Next, Italy in the late 50s, early 60s, entered in the so-called miracolo economico, the economic miracle, achieved its first widespread uh, wealth with, of course, all its contradictions. The great epic intentions of the Italian neorealist project, attitude, the great architectural effort, showed itself as quite marginal, confined to small interventions, partial interventions in the urban reality. On contrary, the city has become unmanageable, contradictions have grown, as have grown the architect frustration, unable in managing the change, in achieving the objective of this initial intellectual aspiration. So reality became, in the 60s, in the reading of the second generation, became increasingly chaotic, disjointed, and at the same time, the political crisis became finally evident, especially in the field of urban and city planning. It became clear that the future of the cities, the future of the cities, were in hands of land and building speculation, promoted by association of politicians and semi-legal or totally illegal corporations. So this situa situation strongly affected the second post-war generation. That in the beginning of the 60s started to face with this great disenchanted project of the reconstruction of, reconstruction of the Italian society. And their belief in the possibility of conditioning, really conditioning the reality. The generation of Aldo Rossi and Vittorio Gregotti and others will have this standpoint from their intellectual criticism. On the contrary, mainly historical and critical Starting from a different, uh, radical difference in reality, and the argument of mentality, theology, uh, he will uh, he will begin to start a deep analysis of the history of uh, architectural theories, development and contradiction, development and contradiction, starting as you may know from the root of the Renaissance. Of course, Italian neorealism, this is Quartiere di Burtino, which became the object of Tafuri's analysis. He is, and in fact, a demystification of this neorealism, of this project of neorealism. Since his first writings on the main actors of this reconstruction, Lodovico Quaroni, Bruno Zevi, Samonà, the first was that of this sect, 
the region. Understand all the levels of uh, this attitude in order to explain its aims, its success, success that were mostly in cinema and in literature and less in the field of architecture and urban planning, but also the, to explain the reason of this failure. But what I find extremely interesting in this essay published by, uh, by the Full Industriale Catalog, interesting maybe especially in, at, at a larger methodological level, um, is that Tafuri proposes a great contextualization, and it's the first and last step of the fire show, uh, uh, the contextualization of realism uh, within the uh, international So, he proposed a kind of approach to transfer from first fire to more realism under other contexts in Europe and in the United States where re this realistic attitude emerged in the 19th and 20th century. First comparative context is uh, revolutionary Russia. Uh, in the architecture of the Yellow Group, uh, especially the proletarian house you are looking at, the fully identifies the traces of a strong realistic uh, attitude, kind of like great in bus, dominated by a marked uh, roof uh, that attempts to entrench the building on the ground, to the ground. But not, not only in Bielogrud, uh, also in the project, first project of the avant-garde architects like Ilya Golosov, of course, that is Melnikov. The fig figures of the peasant world were variously declined, enter into formal expression of the architect. Usually, architects were usually acclaimed, of course, or as pioneers of the new language uh, in architecture. The first projects of the avant-garde, in fact, sanctify reality, as the Soviet state will refer itself mostly to peasant population. The eternal farmer, uh, so this idea of the nostalgia of, of the original, of something new, pure and uh, edenic. We all find this motif in uh, the first paintings of Kazimir Malevich, in, in the Lithic interpretation of the Jewish fairy tales, in, in the transmental poetry of uh, Trucenic Ochlin. This is for the first kind of demystification of the avant-garde and the modernism in general. So this space for realism have marked even the projects of the most prominent figures of the avant-garde. Figures that were fighting in this weight of the abstractionism against historical and traditional approaches. Um, next, I would just like to mark, uh, remark that the, the architecture in the Soviet Union was, was the object of the Puri seminar in 1971-72, the first uh, field trip made by all his colleagues from Venice in 1971, and was the topic of um, uh, different conferences uh, and books he organized with his uh, friends. I will just mention two books, Socialismo Città Avanguardia, made in 1971, where he studied the project of uh, uh, European um, uh, Western architects that were working in Soviet Union in the, from the end of the 20s to the end of the 30s. And in a very interesting book, USSR 1917 1978, made with Marco de Michelis and Jean Louis Cohen in 1978. Second crucial comparative context is Red Vienna. This was, as you know, the, the nickname of the capital of the Austria between 1918 and 1974, when the Social Democrats uh, had the majority and the city was democratically governed for the first time. In these years, the enlightened authorities, based on uh, the ideologies of Austro-Marxism, Austro -Marxism, realized an incredible effort, uh, a collective effort aimed to set up a, a complete socialist uh, realism, realizing an enormous quantity of social housing uh, uh, for workers in uh, the city of Vienna. But the architectural models of this effort were also based on on one side, on the national popular language, 
on the other side on the late empire model. Probably you know that most of the architects of the Red Vienna were in fact also violent. A fully explained Tafun uh, explaining the background of the efforts of the great political experiment claimed what we already heard today is that the values course, the values of Biedermeier are taken from their isolation and delivered to the people. The most avant-garde automatic project follows, in fact, the language of the 19th century. In Sapuri, to the statement of the relativity of the utopian religion. Utopia is no place in a city that chooses to become a home, a home for a working class, with a conscience and redeemed in its values of brotherhood. In fact, those who want to recognize the precise and unified ideological background in the phenomena of realism will be quite disappointed. Sakuri shows how populism can take many faces and causes this difficult difficulty for historians. Uh, and he is interested above all, above all in the in the mentality, uh, in the in the, uh, in, the, in, the in the mental attitude of, of operators and operations, are of course anything but common. Uh, this topic was uh, well analyzed in the seminar next seminar on Grand Vienna and translating this quite important book Vienna Rossa published in 1980. The third Tafuri's quite interesting case study is the architecture of the new region. And in particular, one of the most efforts of the new region, the Tennessee, the planning experience in the Tennessee Valley Authority, where the production of fertilizers, the water control, the rehabilitation of the agricultural land, the regional electrification, if all factors take part in a quite unique American experience of integrated planning. The Fury concentrates on the, on the small village of Norris Town, designed by town planner and uh, landscape designer uh, at Earl Draper, built by, uh, with, with anonymous houses for water. and electrification are the Anglo-Saxon, the, 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 the war. 
this model, the model of the Tennessee Valley uh, Authority in Norristown, will be studied both in spatial terms and both in, uh, and in sociological terms for some neighborhoods in the, made in the late 40s and the beginning of the 50s in Italy. You are seeing the picture of uh, uh, village La Martella built in uh, Basilica. In the spirit of neorealism, the ethic of reconstruction goes in parallel with the, this anti-urban vision of the city, of the neighborhood, with an architectural language uh, far, like, far from the anti-modern aim. But this language, this attitude, Papuri reconnects with some realization that uh, characterized also the fashion role, especially like Innocenzo Sabatini and his marvelous complexes of the 20s, in Rome, complexes in Garbatella, Le Case Popolari, Piazza d'Armi of the 20s, uh, early 20s, and for And these architects Cognition, traditional mood, mostly utopia that confronts with the city and traditional route in avant garde mentality. All this quite fact, dominates the different in the 20th century and in fact describes quite well, quite well the background of Italian neorealism. Realism then is quite a nasty. That is always redefined depending on the context that we uh, have. Realism touches not quite all areas, not always in a very intelligible way. And it is very difficult to grasp it, to understand it. Also, because is there, the, the realism in general is the result of a historical construct, an artificial invention. An invention that Tafuri, as Tafuri tried to show in the case of Italian neorealism, neo can have some relation to the enemy of fascism, the collectivization of the experience and the identification of the country. The only assurance that Tafuri uh, gave is that realism mani manifests uh, an But, so to say, the price to pay uh, of this necessity to communicate is the usage of tradition. And uh, it is not, for Tafuri, any more an innocent operation, because it shows the deep anti-modernism uh, of this attitude inside, inside the, uh, the real world. The ethic of the community, that will, the will for a social regeneration hides the need to expiate some ancient, uh, uh, some ancient errors, some ancient guilt. Ethical commitment is resolved in the search for roots in peasant homes, in a regressive, quite regressive, uh, linguistically regressive ideology, ideology. That is removing the confrontation, the confrontation with the mass society, and that is removing the confrontation from the reality in itself. 